Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com. Check out all the other technology-related shows that we have over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online and subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. You can find us over at quicksurf.com. For those of you who have subscribed, thank you so much. And uh, let's go ahead and get into the cool stuff we found for this episode. Starting off over at news.com.au in their gadgets section, HTC's One 2 has a release date. That is right. HTC has just announced the release date of its upcoming flagship device, known by rumors as the HTC One 2 or HTC M8. Uh, Originally thought to be announced at next week's Mobile World Conference in Barcelona, it seems that HTC's follow-up to its successful One has been delayed, allowing Samsung to get its Galaxy S5 out into consumer hands first. The One 2 is rumored to pack a similar aluminum casing to last year's design, but packing a slightly bigger display somewhere in the 5-inch region. Software-wise, it's expected to come loaded with Google's latest Android 4.4 KitKat operating system covered in HTC's Sense skin. So March 25th, it looks like, is uh, kind of uh, what we're looking at here. You know, should be interesting to see, uh, you know, what the HTC One 2 or M8, if you will, uh, comes with. Pretty neat. Uh, From CNET, new, uh, yeah, CNET.com, actually Asia.CNET.com over in their Asian website. Samsung is to debut a Gear 2 smartwatch with Tizen, not Android. This is kind of Linux-based. Tizen, for those of you who follow... uh, our sister show, Linux Newslog, Tizen is a Linux-based uh, mobile operating system. Um, we've been following the development of that for quite some time. And uh, Samsung has been um, developing Tizen along with Intel and a couple of other partners. Well, the Gear 2 smartwatch is is going to come with Tizen, not Android. So pretty cool. Definitely check it out. Um, you know, it's a wearable watch. You know, if you haven't seen any of the Samsung Gear stuff, it's pretty neat. Uh, should be pretty cool to see what comes of it. From uh, homemediamagazine.com, Hulu hires a chief technology officer. The streaming platform hires a former Sony executive responsible for content uh, stored on the PlayStation platform. Tian Lim it's, is its new chief technology officer, effective March 3rd. Lim replaces Brad Sutter, who served as interim CTO. Sutter now reports to Lim. Lim mo- re- most recently served as the senior vice president of product engineering at Sony Network Entertainment International. And there he saw over oversaw all North American engineering and service operations and led a team of hundreds of engineers. So this is pretty neat. Um, I've been a long-time Hulu user, so I'm curious to see, you know, what they do in terms of technology moving forward. From Engadget, that's right, BlackBerry Messenger is now available to phones running Android 2.3. If you see BlackBerry announcing a million or so new users in the next few days, it's not because the company is finally seeing an increase in sales, unfortunately. Uh, it's because Alicia Keys' ex-employer has kept this promise and launched the BlackBerry messaging platform for Android 2.3. So if you're a huge fan, and I know a lot of people are huge fans of the BlackBerry messaging platform, and if you're running on Android 2.3, you can now get BlackBerry Messenger for Android 2.3. So pretty interesting news. In Sony land... Over at the Sydney Morning Herald in their Digital Life blog, Sony's PlayStation 4 sales allegedly, and I'm saying allegedly because it hasn't really been super confirmed or anything, top 5 million units. Huge number of units. This is awesome. Sony appears to be winning the console war, saying it has sold more than 5.4 million PlayStation 4 consoles since it debuted in November. November? Yeah. 
I am thrilled that so many customers around the globe have continued to select the PlayStation 4 as the best place to play throughout and beyond the holiday season, Sony Computer Entertainment Chief Executive Andrew House said. The PS4 system's momentum just keeps growing stronger. This is good news. There for a while, uh, Sony's PlayStation 3 was getting walloped by Microsoft's Xbox, so it's good to see they've kind of made a little bit of a comeback there. Pretty awesome. From the Los Angeles Times in their business section, Google plans to move into San Francisco's Mission District. What? That's right. There goes the neighborhood. First came the Google bus. Now the Google building. The Mission District in San Francisco, which used to be a largely Latino working class neighborhood, has been ground zero for growing tensions over tech-driven gentrification in San Francisco. Now the internet giant won't just be running its fleet of luxury commuter buses on the congested streets, it's setting up operations in the neighborhood. Oh snap. That sucks. Google plans to take over 35,000 take over a 35,000 square foot building on Alabama Street to house startups the internet giant acquires, according to the Financial Times. The space is large enough to fit about 200 staffers. So, uh, wow. Wow. That's all I have to say. From GameSpot, the Bioshock creator Irrational Games is shutting down. This is kind of a sad moment. Um, Irrational Games, uh, who's the creator of the Bioshock series, is effectively shutting down. Co-founder Ken Levine revealed the news in an update on the developer's website. Uh, the industry veteran will start a new endeavor for Irrational Games owner Take-Two Interactive, while all but around 15 staffers will be out of a job. It's unclear how many people Irrational Games employed at its Quincy, Massachusetts office, but uh, this is definitely sad news. Nobody likes it when a company goes out of business, especially one that made some really great stuff. Um, it's just sad. Anyway, that's it for this edition of The Geek in Air. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quickstriff.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.